Hey folks, and welcome back to part 4, and the second dungeon of the game, Mount Moon. Alright, right off the bat, let's take out all the new encounters we can find here. We can find 4 more Pokemon in total, and uh, those are Zubats, Geodudes, Paris, and Clefairies. Uh, Mount Moon is actually split up into 3 different floors, and uh, based on the floor you're on, you can find the different percentage chance to catch each encounter. So for example, and probably the most notable one, is Clefairy, because Clefairies on the first floor, where we are right now, you can only find 1% of the time, same as male Nidorans at Route 3. But uh, yeah, just don't do what I do and try to find one here, because in recording, it literally took me over an hour to encounter the Clefairy, because I thought I'd be pedantic. And, you know, make it easier for myself in formatting if I just caught everybody in a separate recording right at the beginning of the dungeon. That said, again, just don't do that. Alright, so Zubats. Um, those are your ma most basic dungeon crawlers. If you've played any of the rest of the franchise, you'd already know that by now. However, in this generation, their learn set is quite bad. They still haven't gotten their final evolution yet, and uh, based on the typing and the moves that it has, it's just so underwhelming. Next up we have Geodudes. Um, out of all the tank-based ground or rock types, it's actually probably the best one in the game if you're not looking for a sweeper, but rather a wall. So uh, yeah, I'd actually definitely recommend the Geodude, especially if you have someone to trade with or you have both the game versions or any other version this game can actually trade with. Uh, so you can evolve Graveler later on into Golem. Yeah, great Pokemon actually. Um, next up we have is Paris, and it's actually kind of a peculiar slash Pokemon of interest in the dungeon. So, Pokemon you catch, or encounter rather, um, could have different held items when you catch them in the wild. And uh, for example, for Clefairy, uh, when you find one, which is already really really rare, there's even a smaller percentage chance that it can hold a Moonstone. And right, that's all what Mount Moon is about. We heard about it in the museum, all over Pewter City, the Pokemon Center folk. Clefairies can hold Moonstones, and uh, those are used to evolve some Pokemon, you probably know that, right? However, the thing is, in this whole entire dungeon, you can find two Moonstones. One of them is hidden, and uh, one of them is laid out uh, on the first floor. Now, you probably know that the final stage evolutions of the Nidoran families evolve through Moonstone. So... If you're trying to be a completionist and complete all the pages of the Pokédex, it's actually pretty, you know, pretty important that you try to find some Clefairies that actually hold Moonstones other than just trying to catch uh, all the items in the wild. Because it's practically impossible to get four, right? We can only find two. Alright, so while I was on that tangent, I missed out on a couple of things. Number one, we picked up TM09, which is Bullet Seed, and uh, it's one of the moves that, much like Fury Swipes that Spectre is trying to learn right now, uh, tries to attempt to hit the opponent multiple times in a row. Now, the bad thing is, well, number one, something that's not broken shouldn't try to be fixed, right? And Wine Whip has served us pretty well. I haven't missed with it a whole bunch of times. Plus, naturally, through level ups, Eden is gonna get an even better grass move coming up. That's my reason for not picking up um, Bullet Seed right now, or teaching it to Bulbasaur, rather. When it comes to Fury Swipes, again, Scratch didn't really um, take away a lot of power from us. It never misses, even though it's weak, it does the amount of damage I want it to at specific points. Fury Swipes can miss, and I'm not willing to take that chance, especially because it's not a stab move. And with that, um, Vanille also learned her first move, outside of seeing that she only had naturally. Sadly, it's also not a damaging move, so uh, it shouldn't really get much mention. 
Something really interesting about the dungeon here on the first basement floor is that you can actually pick up tiny mushrooms and big mushrooms. Uh, those are items that don't necessarily have any interest for us in or outside of the battle. But later on in the game there is an NPC who is actually looking for those items and in return he can be very very useful to you and your team. So the weird thing though as you saw I put up uh, pretty much a caption of all the locations of the hidden items and that was because for some reason I couldn't actually find any of them. Uh, neither on my leaf green run that you're watching right now or on the fire red and the locations are definitely correct and those are the location of the items in the source code of the game but for some reason on neither of my versions um, I couldn't actually encounter them and I guess I haven't played the game in a while at least to this completionist extent that I completely forgot about it because I could have sworn that you didn't need an item finder to find all the hidden items in the games. Maybe that's something different with these older games that I kind of uh, left on the shelf for a while so to speak. But yeah, it's really interesting if you're playing along I'd love to know if you can actually find those big and tiny mushrooms on those item locations I put up on the screen when we entered the first basement floor. Other than that, uh, we're actually fighting our first encounter with Theme Rocket. And uh, it's pretty cool, because you don't expect it, right? You enter this basement floor, you have a really small pathway with a ladder, and then right away you get thrown into a battle with a Team Rocket grunt who says, yeah, we're gangsters, alright? You know what I mean? We're gonna pop a, a potion in your ass, or something. Uh, yeah, so, the cool thing is, he actually has a Saint room, but, spoiler alert, most of these grunts will only have Zubats and Rattatas, and just like the bug catchers, after a while, it's gonna get really, really boring and repetitive fighting all these grunts. But for now, they're really, you know, well designed, as you can tell. That's actually my favorite form of any Team Rocket outfit uh, in any Pokemon medium, really. When it comes to the show or within the games, you know, we could do without the Paperboy hat from the 1920s. But other than that, the outfit, the pure black outfit with a white belt and a big red R on the chest is, I think, really, really well designed. It's really clean and uh, it's a simple outfit and it's great. Uh, with this next battle, because all of my battles are pretty much up to this point have been switch battles, which means I start the battle off with Vanille, she is the leader of the party, and then I immediately have to switch out and take out the opposing Pokemon with somebody else, because up until level 9, up until right now, she didn't have any damaging moves. So I thought, why not, let's uh, give her a spin against the Scatterpea, let's see if Vanille can hold her own against this very basic annoying bug type. Plus, like we mentioned before, Caterpies don't really know Poison Sting, only String Shot and Tackle, so I thought, eh, even though it's a level disadvantage for one, it's just the first, you know, the basic stage of a bug, we should be able to take it out, right? In this battle also, uh, we can see the passive ability of Vanille, and uh, because the Caterpie was the opposing gender, it was a male, and uh, for some reason you see those a lot more often against, uh, paired up against you in battles. And that's a part of the reason why I actually chose to go for Vanille as a female in the wild. 50% um, of the time, if affected by your attractions as a cute Jigglypuff out on the town, uh, you may be immobilized. And that's very useful when fighting uh, pretty annoying or strong Pokemon, because as you know, uh, Vanille will be one of our tanks, and uh, you can already tell that though. She's only level 9 and she already has more HP than Spectre or Eden, which is just crazy. Anyway, this uh, super nerd we're fighting right now actually has a really cool uh, team lineup. He has a Magnemite, which from generation 2 onwards is part Steel type, so Karate Chops really do a number on them, and that's really cool. And he also has a Voltorb. Now both of these electric types are actually very good. I wouldn't want to use a Magnemite just because he gets a fourth, you know, the second stage evolution in the fourth gen. Jesus, it took me a little bit to place that sentence in my head like you can see, but uh, that's
that's why I don't wanna use a Magnemite. Plus, both of them, actually, Voltorb and Magnemite, we can't encounter for a very long time. And it's so late that it's up to a point where an electric member of the party at that wouldn't really be useful. Anyway though, Voltorbs and its family line, which is weird to say because it's one of the rare genderless Pokemon, um, its evolved form is the fastest base stat Pokemon in the entire game, and uh, it's really cool. If you ever have the chance, especially in later generations, I would actually suggest that you use an Electrode if you never have. Give it a whirl, it's actually really fun. There's a lot of items on the first floor of Mount Moon, and uh, the good news is there's no hidden items on the first floor. So, yeah, you can just run around freely. And for the love of God, please, buy repels. I was actually really, really short on funds by the time I caught all the encounters, because Paris and Geodude and even Zubat, they all bust out of the ball like once or twice, and that made me, you know, just have to go backtrack all the way back to Pewter Mart and spend all of my remaining funds on Pokeballs, which sucks, and none of the items actually found in Mount Moon are Pokeballs, so it's really unfortunate. Anyway though, uh, this trainer is one of the trainers of interest actually, because uh, she has Oddish, and Oddish is a Fire Red exclusive, so if you're like me and you're playing your, uh, your playthrough along on the Leaf Green cartridge, you can't actually catch an Oddish anywhere in the wild. This will actually, you know, obviously this will put it up registered as seed in the decks, but uh, much like Ekans, if you want it, you'll need to trade it, and uh, yeah, actually not, not too far in the game from now. I'd say one or more parts of this Let's Play, if that's the time format we're using, we'll be able to catch, well, not Oddish, but Bellsprout, it's, uh, it's pairing like what I like to call it. I explained that last time. Similar to Ekans and Sanchu, like they're a pair of exclusives for Fire Red and Leaf Green, uh, there are some others, and Bellsprout is the grass pairing to the Oddish. It, I basically make that assessment chronologically through the game, because most of the different exclusives will be found in a pair in a very similar area. So, yeah, that's where that comes from. Anyway, though, uh, that was simple. I go back to heal and then we continue. And the reason, again, you see those transitions is because I'm still very, very confused as to why I couldn't find uh, those tiny and big mushrooms. Seriously, though, if you are playing along, I'd like to know how that, uh, how that trek is taking you. That said, though, we have another small room here in this basement floor with another rocket member. And, uh, yeah. Let's just take him out. Vanille is actually becoming stronger and stronger. Uh, Pound, even though it's just a basic move, it's normal typed, just like Vanille, because uh, this is the third generation game, don't forget, there is no fairy types. And uh, yeah, that's Stab, same type attack bonus for a very simple move like Pound, uh, matched with surprisingly, you know, decent attack stats for something like uh, Jigglypuff, which isn't threatening at all. It does a number on a Zubat. But in this room, uh, I'll go and uh, get a little bit ahead of myself actually, like I like to do, but you know that by now. You can find a TM for a move called Thief. Now one of the coolest things personally I feel is that in every game uh, of the franchise they connect these, you know, criminally sounding badass type dark moves like Thief and Snatch, uh, in the same place where all the antagonist teams are. And I think that's a cool detail, I mean, I think everybody's noticed it by now, but uh, yeah, I still think it's pretty dope. Um, anyway though, the move Thief is actually interesting. Even though it's a dark type move and it doesn't seem like you really have a use for it right now, much like Bullet Seed or whatever other TM you'll find soon that you'll never actually use from the TM case. The cool thing is that it's one of the ways to actually obtain more Moonstones like I talked about earlier. If you teach it to somebody and, uh, for example, Vanille can learn Thief, I believe, um, and you actually run into a Clefairy or a Paris, 
that's a way that you can actually farm those items that I had trouble finding, like the mushrooms and the moonstones, without actually catching or doing many convoluted hardcore trading type, you know, type mechanics with other games just to be able to complete everything. So I'd recommend that you actually pick up Thief and instead of wasting a lot of money on Pokeballs to catch a lot of pairs, because a lot of them actually hold those mushrooms that I talked about. And all you want to do is you want to go to a mid area or the basement one floor. So the small rooms with two sets of ladders. And uh, because the encounter rate for Paris there is 100%, all you want to do is teach somebody thief, run in that area back and forth, make sure you don't have a repel equipped because, well, then you just waste money. But you run into a Paris, you use thief, you'll most likely knock it out as well because it's not that weak of a move. And uh, you pick up the mushrooms and you do that over and over again until you'd think that you're comfortable enough with those items because even though, like I said, they're not useful at all in or outside of the battle at this stage of the game, they will be later on, especially if you're nitpicky around having really solid move sets on your party. Which, you know, to be honest, I am, so. But you probably noticed that by the type of player I am. I won't even use potions, look at this. I'm so selfish when it comes to this game. Something I didn't actually talk about because we can't encounter the Pokemon in the wild is an Onyx is surprisingly weak. Now, again, it is a little bit weird because we can't really encounter it, but I feel as though I should talk about it because, well, he's the, you know, all-star on Brock's team and we see him right now, so the weird thing is, I'm not sure if you know this little trivia fact, I suppose, Onyx has only 45, um stat base attack and it doesn't evolve in this game despite it being a third generation game it can't evolve it's a horrible pokemon and that's why i said earlier pick up a geodude and you know trade it however you want honestly pick up a graveler and don't trade it and uh, you'll be better off than having a scary looking onyx back there Bulbasaur tried to learn two moves at the same time while leveling up, which is actually extremely rare when it comes to any Pokemon in any game. He tried to learn Sleep Powder and Poison Powder, and 99% of people would go for Sleep Powder because it's amazingly efficient at actually catching different Pokemon, but because we already have Sing on Vanille, I go for Poison Powder, because now we can really stall out and uh, take out any bulky opponent that we otherwise couldn't. And that's amazing, and it's one of it, it's one of the forefronts of why poison types are excellent. They're all tanky, they can deal damage, but you know, most notably, they can stun you, poison you, put up leech seeds. They're really annoying, and that's what I want to turn Eden into. And uh, because he sadly still hasn't evolved yet, actually none of our team members have. So, you know. I think it's a really decent uh, move pool upgrade and having more than one sleeping status condition move on your party uh, is just kind of a waste, you know. At level 14, Vanille learns Disable. It's kind of a cool move. You can disable any move that the opponent throws at you at the same turn and uh, yeah, it's not really incredibly useful when playing here. Because, well, it's a single player type game, so all the Pokemon you encounter you'll take out pretty, pretty quickly. It might be useful later on in the game, but again, for right now, for fighting these quite simple mechanics, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of a waste. You probably won't use it much. This trainer is actually my favorite battle in the entire dungeon. And as I speak about <laughs> Disable being useless, he disables my only damaging move and I have to switch out. So this super nerd is my favorite because, well, not only is he a precursor to getting your pretty much only fossils of the game, or, you know, the fossil location of the specific game, 
but he also has incredibly original Pokemon. If you're playing for the first time, you'd have no idea what the Grimer is. You'd be terrified because it's scary looking. Uh, shut up, it's scary looking, okay? And uh, yeah, they're the types of poison Pokemon that I talked about that I love. They're tanky, they don't have much attack or special attack, but they don't need to because they're tanky. They can damage you slowly over time, they can endure a lot of painful hits. And uh, yeah, they'll whittle your team down if you're not careful. Not to mention, it's one of the last battles of the dungeon, so by this point, if you're like me and you're super greedy with using your medicine items, yeah, they can easily take you out and uh, they can easily annoy you until they take you out. Because not to mention all of that, if you don't go back often to heal and you have a team like mine, which doesn't have incredibly offensive moves, you'll run out of power points too before they even whittle you down. Like for example, even though I don't want to use a wine whip, we have less than half of my Wine Whips available, and I haven't even used Eden that much. So, I definitely needed to be careful in this battle, because I could have wiped out, and I usually don't let that ever happen. Well, if worst came to worst, I would have just used a potion, so... But I'm greedy, so... whatever. One of the coolest things actually, is that these super nerds are often seen in all of the dungeons that you encounter. And me playing through the game for the first time, I actually started looking forward to them. Because there's super nerds and there's actually Pokemaniacs. That's another archetype of trainer you can find. And they usually have the most original, coolest Pokemon you'll ever find. I say that because we actually see so many Rattatas and Zubats and Caterpies and Weedles uh, as we fight the different trainers, whether it's bug catchers or not, somehow all those Pokemon end up in everybody's parties and uh, yeah, it definitely gets stale and that's why I edit out a lot of the wild trainers. He also says that there's a research lab on Cinnabar Island that can revive one of these fossils. This is your only chance to pick between the two. You can find an Omanyte or a Kabuto. Of course, when the fossils are actually turned into Pokemon. You know, DNA extracted or whatever. And uh, yeah, sadly, much like any other exclusive Pokemon, you'll have to trade it out uh, once you excavate it or whatever you say. Here you can learn Mega Kick or Mega Punch. These are the only move tutors in the game that actually support those moves and uh, they're normal type moves that are incredibly powerful but lack some accuracy. However, because we already have Pound, which is an effective, reliable move that also has Stab because we're a pure normal type, I definitely decide to forego Defense Curl because already we have the most HP out of anyone and uh, we're just a cute little Jigglypuff with a marker as a microphone, so... Yeah! Other than that, you can find the TMO5 Roar, and you can find the Hidden Great Ball that I showed off before I talked to the Move Tutors. You can also find a Hidden Raspberry here, and it's one of the berries that I'll talk about more next time when we get into berry uh, berry creation and medicine creation, but yeah, it doesn't have any other use outside of that in battle. Here we have a sand troop, because after all we're on route 4, and if you're playing fire red, you can find Ekans here. If you're playing leaf green, 25% of the time you can find a sand troop here, and uh, yeah, you'll be doing some trading in the next episode, don't get me wrong. But with that, uh, we've caught the Sentru, the only new type. We've defeated Team Rocket at Mount Moon and set their actions back afoot. And uh, next time around, let's explore the next city we're upon and uh, potentially fight for the second gym badge. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys then.